Welcome to my allotment in East Sussex. Weather's been okay, turned a bit colder, occasional rain, but not enough to improve the dry soil. Autumn has started and everyone on the plot has remarked how quickly harvesting is changing. My runner beans have come to an end seemingly sooner than previous seasons. You may recall the volunteer potatoes which sprung up between the rows of beans. So many I left them to their own devices. I had put a trench down the centre, filled with kitchen waste to increase the worm population. An error was not to exclude potato peelings from the kitchen waste, a large group of volunteers. I can now strip the canes and see if I have a worm increase on what harvest, if any, of potatoes. Canes removed, I rake the surface, clearing an abundance of decaying leaves to expose the potato plant stalks. I was surprised on a number of fronts. First, how dry the soil was, though I did water the plants regularly during the growing period. Secondly, I was surprised at the yield of potatoes, 10 pound of charlottes, and lastly, no worms except a large juicy one right at the end. So they must be there, but well down closer to the water table. So was it an error not to segregate the potato peelings? You know what? I think next season I'll re repeat the error. 10 pound of spuds for free. Can't be bad. Starting the day on the plot is increasingly becoming a bind. Unloading equipment for access to the tool I require. But it's getting better, but it's still a bind. All this week clips have been put together as other work has gone on. But in the interest of progress, the place for the long handled tools has to be resolved. First task is to provide support on the underside of the lid. Not made easy by its awkward shape and internal rib arrangement. A housing is formed allowing a bearer to sit over the central rib which is not parallel and without square corners which results in scribing and fitting and the first bearer making the pattern for the second. Holes are drilled and the bearer secured from the lid surface. The lid is placed back onto the box to check for any obstruction. None are apparent. A sheet of half inch ply is positioned on the bearers. Any thicker would make the lid too heavy, thinner too flexible and not provide a secure a fixing. Nails are inserted at what looks ok spots and a curve transfer for cutting. Some people have difficulty in cutting a straight line using a handsaw. Cutting a curved line is even harder, but I did not want to take it home, jigsaw it and then return. Perseverance, taking regular breaks, is the order of the day. The rake is positioned and secured by using metal spring clips. I would turn that rake over if I were you, Michael. It'll foul what's ever inside the box. Just on the box to test for any obstructions. The lid will go down, something's obstructing it, so feel underneath, have a good look and there is a plastic of lock which the catch is fixed up, so I'll have to cut round that using the small saw. Back on the box for another fit and it appears it is a successful fit. Or is it? Dad. Oh 
OK, so what did they do in the olden days, before trams were pulled by horses and metal clips were not invented? I know. A wood cleat. A wood cleat. At last. On the gardening side, I noticed my sweet corn were not ripening. Or were they? And then I caught a thief raiding them, which also told me why my carrots were also diminishing. My daughter. Well, that's all right. Anyone else, there would have been an altercation. Another task was catching up with the weeding, bringing attention to the development of the celeriac type monarch. The textbook advises cutting back the foliage to put the energy into the bulb, not the leaves. And as an experiment, cut the leaves back on half the plants to see what was the effect. Not impressed with the results, so I had a chat with Bert, who has some success with this vegetable. Right, so you take out yeah, a little one when we when we put them in, you see. So never been there. You do like that? Yeah. Right. So that'll go in on the blog. Yeah. But you'd. But what I've got to say on the blog is that you do that at time of planting. Yes, when we put them in. When you put them in. Right. That's... I then went down to see Kevin. Who introduced me to growing celeriac and right. asked him Kevin what he does to encourage bulb growth. Just pruned the outside leaves and left the centres in. And this is and that's that's still better than mine. Certainly a better shape. So So yours are worse than mine then? Yeah, do you wanna look? Did them at the same time as I did. Oh right. Did did Bert. But the difference is, is that he only cut out this centre here. Oh, right. So what you can see now is a re is a really bigger yeah. one. Yeah. Now what I did on mine, half of them, to find out wh which way to do it, I cut the whole lot off. Oh, right. On half of them. Yeah. So half of mine, it's grown back. They've they've grown back bigger than the ones that I just left oh. but not as big as this no no and that's what Bert did yeah he's the boy he's the boy can I have a look at your potatoes uh, Dick yeah surely surely they're coming out all right coming what out very well what about the slugs but unfortunately the white these these seem a bit uh, the slugs are getting at them a bit but they aren't on Kevin's. No, but uh, Kevin's are red. I reckon the slugs can't find them. You they think they're colour blind here? I reckon so. And that's why they leave them. I reckon that's what it is. I know. I know for a fact that that if I grow things like car and things like that, the bloody slugs have them like you wouldn't believe. 
But if you grow the deer I mean, am I, I don't know, I haven't taken any... Well, I've grown cara this year, but I've grown them in buckets. Yeah. These are Kevins. And they're reds. And there's very little slug damage. And you just heard Dick say that uh, reds don't get slug damage, because, and in my words, the, uh, the slugs are colour blind. Kevin says it's a load of rubbish that he says he's, he's had slug damage on his red before. He just don't know why they've left him alone this year. But he's had slug damage on reds, as he has with his whites. Having said that, those volunteer charlots grown with the runner beans were devoid of slug damage, yet an adjacent bed growing beetroot were heavily damaged by slugs. So slugs were about. This is last year's onion bed being weeded and then hoed. This season's leeks are advanced and I've already harvested some and they were delicious. Here we are at the end of the week and I hope you've enjoyed this week's allotment diary episode. What are your thoughts on pruning celeriac leaves or growing potatoes from potato peelings or any other subject? Please do like, share and comment on this video and please subscribe to my channel. And when subscribing, please do remember to press on the little bell to get an alert every single time we upload a new video. But thank you very much for watching. Take care and bye.